How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here and this is the ultimate FPS increase guide for Valorant in 2024. In this video we're going to be covering absolutely everything you need to know and do to your game to ensure that you have the lowest input latency, the best overall FPS, the smoothest gameplay experience, alongside some quality of life settings that you should be enabling to ensure that you have the highest competitive advantage. This video is tailored towards all PCs, high end, low end, old, new, but leveling up your gaming doesn't end there. If you're looking to share your best clips, crucial moments or improve by watching back your own gameplay with a critical eye, Steel Series Moments has you covered. With the ability to automatically clip your gameplay on nearly all games without specific hardware like an Nvidia or Radeon GPU, working across practically all systems and hardware, with a built-in editor so you can get the exact clip you're looking for, with the ability to quickly drag and drop the clip out of the editor and into one of your favourite platforms like Discord, X or YouTube to share it. All you need to do is head over to the link in the description down below, download Steel Series GG, head into the Moments section set your desired clip length, resolution, quality and FPS, boot into Valorant or any of your other games and enjoy automatic clips. If you ever want to clip something manually all you need to do is press Alt and S, you'll then be notified in the top right hand side where you can watch it back instantly, edit it and or share it via the app with a simple adjust, export, drag and drop and share. Level up your gaming today and support the channel by downloading and trying Still Series Moments today utilizing the link in the description down below. I'd recommend booting into a deathmatch or just inside of the firing range pressing escape and heading over to general. One option I would definitely recommend that you at least try out for your system is to enable the raw input buffer, especially if you're using a relatively high-end gaming mouse, make sure that you use this option. Minimap size I'd recommend keeping as high as possible. It's then also recommended to lower the minimap zoom to a level in which you are happy with. You want to have at least three quarters if not the entire map visible inside of the minimap at all times. This can ensure that you know where all of your teammates are quickly and easily and you can gather information without having to go to different parts of the map or relying on VoIP. Rotate and fixed is complete personal preference. Keep player centered is also personal preference, but you may be able to get away with a lower zoom if you turn keep player centered off because the minimap center point will not be relative to your current player's location. It's also worthwhile going through the privacy options to match your personal preference. You can never be too safe these days, so ensure that you set these up to something in which you are comfortable with. A few options in which I like to adjust for myself, and this can also provide a small FPS improvement, is to turn show mature content to off. If you do wish to keep show mature content, I'd recommend recommend switching this second option to off. For network buffering, for those of you on lower end connections, especially on Wi-Fi and it's not perfect, I'd actually recommend trying out the network buffering to moderate in those cases. Show bullet traces is more of a personal preference, but it will give a small performance increase. See, I shoot my gun, you can see the tracer coming out of it. And if you switch this to off, you can no longer see the tracer coming out of your gun. Mainly personal preference, but can give a small FPS boost. We're also navigating over to the video tab, going over to stats. I'd recommend enabling stats when you're optimizing your game, but I'd actually recommend turning all of the stats off unless they are 100% necessary when you're actually playing the game, because depending on how many of the stats you have enabled, you could be seeing up to a 50 FPS loss in some cases, depending on the stats in which are displayed. I'd first of all recommend setting client FPS to show both and finding game to render latency text only. These numbers should see a drastic improvement by the end of the video. Moving on to the optimized in-game settings, you can see I'm getting 245 FPS and a 15 millisecond game to render latency. Latency. Display mode in nearly all cases should be set to full screen. Unless you are utilizing a custom resolution, I'd recommend setting this to your monitor's native resolution and the highest refresh rate available with inside of it. Make sure that you select the highest refresh rate with inside of here, because if you don't, you could be giving up a decent amount of end to end system latency. Limit FPS in menus. I'd actually set this down to 60 because you don't need it to be higher than that. Limit FPS in the background. I'd keep to on and leave this at 30. And limit FPS always. We're currently going to be setting to no for now, but we will be coming back to this later on. For reflex low latency, for those of you on Nvidia GPUs later on in the video when we cover FPS caps, you could potentially see better end-to-end -end system latency when utilizing a manual FPS cap rather than utilizing Nvidia reflex if you are GPU bound. It's now time to go over to graphics quality. Now there isn't anything particularly exciting with inside of here because Valorant is a very well scaling game, meaning you go with low presets or low settings, you're going to get a huge FPS boost. And because it's not a particularly graphically dense or heavy game, for this reason, regardless if you're using a super low-end eSports specific budget PC all the way up to the latest and greatest in gaming components and you have an RTX 4090 you want to have multi-threaded rendering set to on material quality low textures low details low UI quality low vignette off vsync off even if you're planning on utilizing a G-Sync or FreeSync setup, V-Sync needs to be turned off inside of the game. Anti-aliasing is going to be the most personal preference setting with inside of here. I personally really like the way the game looks with anti-aliasing turned off and it also gives better performance.
difference. Many of you watching this video will more than likely not agree with that and you'll want to utilize some form of anti-aliasing. MSAA 2X is going to give you the best results in terms of performance and visuals. If that still looks too bad, you could go with MSAA 4X. Alternatively, if you need every ounce of performance possible and you simply can't go with no anti-aliasing, you could try out FXAA, but it can add a small amount of blur to the game, but it's very lightweight on performance. Anisotropic filtering, even setting this up to 2X in all of the systems I've tested this on has seen a bit of performance loss and because texture filtering doesn't really matter too much in this game, I would set this to 1X. Improved clarity, we're going to be leaving off, experimental sharpening off. Bloom can make some effects and skins inside of the game just have a bit more vibrancy and look a bit more polished, but it will come with an FPS loss. So we're going with off, distortion off and cast shadows off. Casting shadows off does not give a competitive disadvantage. This does not have anything to do with shadows coming off of playable characters. You won't be able to see people from around corners inside of Valorant if you have shadows turned on or off. Go back inside of your game and just from a few different options set on this PC, you've seen that I've gone from about 245 FPS to about 500 and we've dropped that render latency all the way down to about 6.2 on average. We're not done with all the optimizations just yet but that's already a massive improvement. Yes the image looks a bit flatter and a lot more basic but this is an esports centric game in nearly all cases. You want the lowest input latency and the highest FPS wherever possible. Once your in-game settings are dialed in it's now time to decide if we're going to be utilizing Nvidia Reflex if it's available, if we're going to be setting up G-Sync or FreeSync or if we're going to be going with a manual FPS cap. Now in my opinion for those of you on 240 hertz monitors or higher even on super high-end systems I would recommend setting up G-Sync or FreeSync if possible. When this is set up properly it's around one millisecond of render latency such a silky smooth and consistent gameplay experience that I would highly recommend that you at least try it out. If you would like to see how to quickly and easily properly set up G-Sync or FreeSync for your system please do check out the how to set up G-Sync guide linked in the description down below. It works both for G-Sync and FreeSync. It's super quick and easy and I guarantee most of you that watch it will not go back to using non-G-Sync or FreeSync even in competitive games. To demonstrate the latency improvements from capping FPS or utilizing Nvidia Reflex I can clearly see that I am GPU bound from my RTSS overlay on the right hand side. In the top left hand side we have a game to render latency of 4.7. Pressing escape, go into reflex and switching this to on, go back inside of the game, you can actually see that the game to render latency hasn't changed. That's because in many cases, in my testing on this patch of Valorant, Nvidia Reflex doesn't seem to work properly in some situations. So if I press escape and go back to Nvidia Reflex but go with on plus boost, even though I am GPU bound, going back inside of the game, you can now see that my game to render latency has dropped down to 2.8 milliseconds, which is fantastic. If you do decide that you're going to be sticking with Nvidia Reflex for your system, please do also check the F FPS between on and enable plus boost alongside the latency and see what works best for your system. For instance here, if we set reflex low latency to on, you can see I'm getting about 760 FPS, but if we go with on plus boost, as we're GPU bound, you can see that we're down to about 690. Now yes, that's about a 60 to 70 FPS loss, but the latency benefits on this system are better, so I'm going to be sticking with this for this system. You really do need to take just a few minutes to dial this in for your system because it's completely unique to your GPU, the resolution you play out, the settings you're on, but what if this isn't the case for you or what if you're on a GPU that doesn't support Nvidia Reflex? Going back to Nvidia Reflex off, goes back to 4.7, this time skipping out on Nvidia Reflex, going to limit FPS always, setting this number to 500 because it's the maximum and my GPU is currently exceeding this, then switching this to on, going back inside of the game, you can see that I'm getting a 500 FPS cap and my render latency is at 3.2. It's not as good as Nvidia Reflex in this case, but that's because we've given up about 200 50 FPS, but for those of you on Radeon GPUs or Intel GPUs, or if you're not looking at a super high FPS number anyway, you could potentially get as good or if not even better results than Nvidia Reflex utilizing a manual FPS cap. Now when setting a manual FPS cap for your system, you need to be realistic and this needs to be set up mainly inside of real world games. You need to cap your FPS at something that your system is able to achieve about 95% of the time. In real world games, if you're sometimes dropping down to let's say 200 FPS and on average you're getting about 260 to 300. In that scenario, I would actually cap at 200 FPS because your system is able to achieve it about 95% of the time and it's going to shave off that extra GPU load, drastically reducing that game to render latency and giving you a cooler, quieter PC that's drawing less power. It takes a little bit of extra work, but this means it's available on Nvidia, Intel and AMD GPUs, regardless of Nvidia Reflex support. Nvidia Reflex is super useful and can potentially outperform this method as it works as a dynamic FPS cap, but please Please do experiment around with enabled or enabled plus boost to see which actually is giving you the lower latency and experiment around with capping FPS manually.
manually. On the topic of capping FPS and NVIDIA Reflex, this is why I like to utilize G-Sync or FreeSync with inside of Valorant. When set up properly, you're only going to be reintroducing about one millisecond of render latency, and in exchange for that, you're getting a super smooth, consistent game, FPS that is constantly being synced up to the screen's refresh rate, zero tearing, high-end FPS is going to be capped, which is giving you that super low latency reduction, lowering overall GPU load, power draw, temperature, and increasing consistency. For those of you that are still not happy with their overall FPS, a few last tips in which I can recommend is to first of all go to the bottom right hand side, click the task icon tray, and start right clicking and closing out of any launches, applications you do not need open when playing Valorant. My main and most important tip for those of you looking for better performance from Windows optimizations in 2024 is honestly to utilize a fresh Windows 11 install. Windows 11 has come a long way, it has so many useful features now. If you're on Windows 10, I would highly recommend the upgrade, and if you're on Windows 11 and have been on it for a long time, consider just doing a complete wipe of your system. Obviously, make sure that you triple check that everything is backed up that you need. Everything that you can possibly think of, please triple check. A few last options that you should definitely make sure that you're utilizing, even if you're on a fresh install or not, navigate down to the Windows button, search for Game, Space, Mode, and ensure Windows Game Mode has been enabled. We'll also navigate down to Graphics, head to Change Default Graphics Settings. I would then recommend that you enable optimizations for windowed games with inside of here. If you also see the option for Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling, this option that isn't really a recommendation from me. Play a quick round of Spike Rush or something fast, try it out with it turned on. Turn it off, restart your system, run a game or two, and if you notice a performance uplift, fantastic, you know what setting to go with for your system. If you really enjoy optimization content and would like to get more out of your system for other games or even Valorant, consider checking out the playlist section in the description down below. If you're not entirely sure where to go next, check out one of the two videos on screen, and I'll see you guys over there.